So this uh, evening, I'll be presenting Parex or Pares, Alternatives to Building an Expressway Over the Pasig River. And I'll treat this like a summary since I'm, I'm the last in the series. So uh, I beg your indulgence if uh, some of these things you may have already seen or heard in previous presentations and uh, treat it as a recap. Everybody knows uh, that the Parex is, um, is the proposed 19.39 uh, uh, kilometer, 95 billion six lane elevated X-rays expressway to be built above the Pasig River for the stated main purpose of alleviating traffic congestion. But we all know that traffic cannot be solved by building skyways because of the, and I will repeat it again, induced demand principle. The actual problem is the lack of a comprehensive transport system that is one, focused on moving people and not cars, two, includes river, ferry, pedestrian, and bicycle networks, and three, is tied to proper metropolitan-wide land use planning. So this is the question we all have to ask ourselves, which would you, we like to leave beside a river or an expressway? And elevated skyways, as mentioned by a lot of the speakers before me, uh, would only bring air pollution where there previously was not in this uh, corridor, the, the Pasig River, uh, to noise pollution, uh, 50 to 60 decibels uh, within uh, 50 to 20 meters. That's the, that, meters, that's about the noise that of an, uh, uh, a hair dryer uh, right next to your ear. Number three, vibration from the, uh, from the uh, expressway is a factor with heritage uh, structures and would compromise foundations. Number four, it would compromise river hydrology and ecology, as mentioned by the speakers in, uh, uh, in the, uh, I believe, the second or the third uh, of the series. Number five, it will cause visual blight. And number six, it will re reduce real estate values, which has been proven all over the world. Uh, this is an example of how vibration can cause damage. This is the bridge to nowhere, which the DPWA is almost completed. Um, and because of this construction, it is believed that it had compromised the foundations of the uh, centuries old, the Bok Church, and during the earthquake, it collapsed. It's really a bridge too far. So after the initial public outcry, after SMC announced it was uh, announced the Parex project, it uh, pivoted and said it was adding BRT bike and pedestrian lanes, which would only add to the width of the six car lanes. But this is just lipstick on a pig and are not viable for this infrastructure format as, as pedestrians would need to access levels four or five stories above ground. So this is uh, the Pasig River uh, in with showing one of the short stretches of linear parks that I uh, was able to design with June Palafox in the first series of improv improvements in 1998 for the Pasig uh, River Rehab uh, Commission. But this is how it would look like if the Parex uh, is allowed to be built. And SMC had claimed that Parex would be uh, like the expressways along the Han River in Seoul producing minimal impact. But this is misleading since the Han is a very wide uh, river uh, between 600 and 700 meters wide in, in sections compared to the Pasig, which is 80 to uh, 120 meters wide and sometimes as, uh, as uh, close as uh, 60 meters. And the parks would cover 30 to 60 percent of most of the sections of the Pasig River. Now the Pasig River, as shown in the first uh, uh, evening's uh, presentations uh, have irreplaceable natural and built heritage. It would compromise the sustainability and, um, and uh, historic sites in the Pasig River and its environs. This is a picturesque uh, postcard uh, from the uh, early uh, 20th century uh, showing that the Pasig River has a history of use by settlers on its banks for a millennia. The commercial history and success of Manila from the 17th century onwards rested on its muelles, its keys, which brought goods and produce to Manila. Ferries also connected the city to Mandaluyong, Makati, and Pasig, as well as Laguna towns via the Laguna de Bay. So this is a picture of the Jones Bridge, uh, and you don't see any buildings in the horizon because this is in the 19, early 1920s before the 
a post office was built in the Mayhem Garden and the Metropolitan Theater, as well as the City Hall was not yet constructed, but it shows that the Pasig was used uh, as a, a, a transport uh, system for goods uh, and people uh, until the 20th century. So coconuts were on the river, as well as uh, cigarette uh, factories, tobacco factories, uh, uh, timber uh, mills, uh, rice uh, storage. And uh, you also had, aside from coconuts, you had crocodiles. And crocodiles were caught in the Pasig, showing how, uh, how alive uh, Pasig was and still is. Unfortunately, uh, uh, there are no more crocodiles in the Pasig River. They've changed their habitats and can now be found mostly in government offices. These are heritage structures by the Pasig River, mostly in the Binondo and, uh, and Santa Cruz area. They're all familiar with this and all of the, these structures as well as over a hundred other uh, structures and sites are going to be compromised by the building of the Parex River. These are pictures I took um, just before the lockdown uh, last year. It seems like such a long time ago. So heritage sites and structures uh, that may be compromised by Parnex stage one is shown here with uh, uh, sites and structures in Mandaluyong, Makati, and Pasig. This is based on the alignment of, the, uh, of San Miguel. And they've said that uh, after, after this po was posted, they uh, said that it was on the other side, but regardless, of which side it is going to be built on, it would compromise a whole lot of uh, heritage uh, along the uh, 20 plus kilometers of the passing route. It will also affect uh, the Araceros forest park, close to 8,000 plants and trees and 10 species of birds, as well as a dozen other smaller parks and natural areas along uh, the route. So, um, but uh, it was not uh, supposed to be like this, uh, all, of the, all of our lack of open space. The 1905 Vernon Plan of Man for Manila uh, indicated four large parks, and nine large playgrounds and play fields, which would have given Manila the equivalent of New York's uh, city central park in terms of green uh, park space. We nev were never able to build it as seen in, th in this aerial picture of Manila. Uh, so Manila in today's reality is over 600 square kilometers with 12 plus million residents with very few open space uh, accessible to them. So this is comp a comparison of um, uh, central Manila uh, with central New York. Uh, and we only have 58 hectares serving 12.8 million residents while New York Central is uh, part serves uh, 8.5 million residents with 315 hectares, not counting the 2,000 plus other hectares in the other four boroughs of New York. Singapore is, uh, is also uh, relatively rich in open space, the 101 gardens by the Bay in central uh, Singapore, as well as, in fact, Singapore has 320 parks or over 2,500 hectares plus another 3,000 uh, hectares of nature reserves, giving them 10 square meters uh, public parks and open space per person, more than the minimum nine square meters uh, required by, uh, which is the target of World Health Organization, while Metro Manila is 0.2, Metro Cebu is 0.1. So Singapore has 20 times more parks and, and open space than, than Manila and 40 times more than Cebu City. Those of you who have been lucky to visit uh, Singapore and Hong Kong, and see the difference. So instead of the Parex, why not Paris? The Pasig River Esplanade would be a better investment for inclusive mobility, the protection of natural and bit heritage, as well as the provision of accessible, much needed open space for everyone in Metro Manila. So if we built the Esplanade in the 25 kilometer Pasig River on both sides, it would give us a total green area larger than the 58 hectares of Rizal Park, and it can be built at the cost of only 1.5% of the budget barracks. So this is a proposal, and, um, and over uh, the last 20 years uh, that I've been studying uh, the Pasi River, and a lot of us in, uh, in both in the Philippine Association of Landscape Architects, as well as the Philippine 
um, Institute of Environmental Planners have been looking at the, these issues uh, for decades, uh, not just recently as, as uh, uh, as stated by San Miguel, we're not uh, Johnny come lately into the issue. We've been studying this, and this are this is really our our fields of specialty, and and the issues we looked at have been studied studied assiduously by all of these professionals in in my two related fields as well as uh, um, architects. So this is a proposed park and park network uh, for Central Manila. We proposed in 2017, showing mostly pedestrian bridges to stitched together the north, north and south banks of the uh, Pasig River as well as potential open space in Pandakan Park and Malacanang Park. So this is a proposed redevelopment of Manila Central historic call uh, proposed by us uh, when we were doing the uh, master plan for Rizal Park in the previous administration in 2013 and this would lead to uh, producing uh, uh, expanding uh, result parts 58 hectares to over 100 hectares of uh, open green space. So this is a proposal, uh, part of the package for the Mayor Isco Moreno for the value of the Banco Nacional. And this is for the Mueli de uh, Industria uh, in uh, uh, Binondo uh, also uh, four years ago. So the Paris enhancement could be extended to the 20 kilometers of Manila's Esteros, and this is what we could do with, with, with the remaining 20. Actually, we had uh, an original 40 kilometers of Esteros, and I believe the previous uh, evening's presentation showed uh, Paco Estero, but this is what could be done for all of the rest of the uh, 20 kilometers. So connectivity would be important between MRT and B BRT ferries, pedestrian and bike networks. This is Guadalupe which has, is very deficient in intermodal connectivity and very simply, uh, this could be addressed with minimal cost by just connecting uh, the places where, peop uh, where people, not cars, have to um, uh, pass. And this is another uh, angle uh, showing the Guadalupe Bridge, which is, uh, as, as a lot of you could, could tell, used by a lot of pedestrians crossing uh, and it saves them a lot but it's not weather uh, protected and this is what could be done if we don't do all of this uh, positive intervention this is the negative uh, result of uh, if we allow par par parks to be built so there are also no dedicated pedestrian bridges crossing the 25 kilometer passing river while the three kilometer singapore river has eight uh, actually, uh, our, my good friend William T has designed one uh, uh, right here at the post office, but it's not yet complete. So we potentially have only one in the whole 25 kilometers, while the Pasig River has 37 bridges, fiber pedestrian, but most of the other bridges are pedestrian friendly with wide sidewalks. The Yara River in Melbourne has five pedestrian bridges. At least six pedestrian bridges can build, be built over the Pasig for the cost of only one per vehicular bridge. Actually, it's more like 10 pedestrian bridges for the cost of one vehicular bridge. Now, there, uh, we've seen from previous uh, presentations, global and regional examples, I'll end with uh, local alternatives to expressways over the rivers. Of course, Singapore, where I lived for 12 years, I was involved uh, in a number of sections of the Singapore River, in the Keys, uh, in Robertson Key, and in um, uh, near Bo Boat Key. This is uh, one of several pedestrian um, Bridges uh, 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 provided with art by uh, Philippine, Filipina artist Pasito Abad. In Kuching in uh, Sarawak, we have their Kuching River Walk, a wonderful place for everyone and inclusive too. Of course, you, you just saw the Chong uh River uh, uh, project from the previous uh, speaker. The Rio project in, uh, in Madrid, Spain. San Francisco and Barcadero from the previous speaker from the CNU. So worldwide, the demolitions of x rays and elevateds, um, you, you just have to look at the internet for all of this. There are dozens all over the globe, uh, too many to uh, state over here. The rest of the world has learned and yet we persist in repeating the mistakes of, uh, of, of the whole world uh, in the name supposedly of progress. So these are, there, these are all the cities in uh, the US based on a New York Times article. We've seen this in our previous uh, speaker, Harbor Drive, 
the Seattle waterfront before and after. And of course, the big dig, the big dig in uh, Boston that has reconnected the old core with waterfront and replaced it with the Kennedy Park. So we don't have to look uh, too far afield uh, because we've already done it. We've already, uh, uh, be, we have been able to take uh, what was gray and concrete infrastructure and turn it to green people centered infrastructure. This is what we saw when we were brought to the Iloilo uh, River, which is a dike road, and we were asked to turn it into an esplanade for people. We did the design in three months. We had several stakeholder meetings. We got comments from everyone. We produced the final drawings and built the first phase in six months at the cost of 68 million for the first phase. We're now in phase nine, um, producing nine, uh, uh, about nine kilometers of Esplanade in Iloilo. And it has become the poster, for, uh, poster image of Iloilo City. One of the things uh, that uh, has come out of this is the increase in real estate value from uh, before the building of the Esplanade at, uh, at uh, two to 3,000 pesos per square meter. It's now 20 to 30,000 per square meter, proving that uh, investment in the public realm will accrue profits, not just to everyone who can use the Esplanade, but also to the private uh, property owners. This is uh, phases one, two, and three. The Esplanade has won two national awards from the Philippine Association of Landscape Architects and the NCCA Haligid and Danal. Skateboards, people uh, walking and jogging early and morning in the afternoon. It's for all Ilongos, it does not discriminate. It's inclusive and it also accepts bikes. And in the evening, you take, can take a wonderful boat ride. So it proves that we can do it because Ilo, Ilo has done it. It has uh, expanded to the to nine phases, approximately nine kilometers uh, completed. And it's also uh, given birth to other projects, uh, some of which we were involved with like this, the provincial capital, where we found uh, we were able to recover two large open spaces, which became parks and events spaces connected to es the Esplanade in the background of the building. So this has led to a resurgence of open space uh, construction. And uh, not to say that Iloilo was not already rich. Uh, they have six large plazas and parks, uh, which uh, we are also assisting the government in enhancing. Uh, this is one of them, Sunburst uh, Plaza, which used to house a, a stadium that was only used once a year. And it's now uh, back and connected to the Esplanade Phase 9 at the rear. We expanded, we expanded the open space linear park network to Aquino Boulevard, where we were able to convince the DPWH, yes, they can be talked to, to uh, give 40% of their right of way for bicycles and pedestrians. We designed it in, uh, in six months, constructed it in a year for the first phase. This is how it looked at the start. The trees are much bigger, but this is how it looks on back day. This is before a uh, pandemic, but, uh, uh, after the pandemic, because uh, uh, Iloilo had this infrastructure, it became one of the most re ready cities uh, to give alternative transport uh, for its citizens, which is now very much used. They have expanded the network to segregated bike lanes. Everybody bikes there now. It's become a bike capital of the Philippines. And this is the network, uh, the bike network. And, uh, uh, participation of citizens and artists in constructing and uh, decorating their bike racks. This was last year, and this is uh, every day in Singapore, in, in Iloilo, which is now the bike capital of the Philippines. So what ha has Iloilo done? It has shown that uh, it could construct nine kilometers of esplanade, 32 kilometers of bike lanes, uh, pedestrian-only bridges and pedestrian bike lane retrofitted bridges. That's the first uh, uh, pedestrian bridge, that new bridge that, they're, uh, that they've now completed and they're planning even more. So that's proof that it can be done and we can do it. it uh, it'll, it'll, congratulations to them. It's been awarded the gold uh, for most bike-friendly city in the Philippines. So Iloilo Ilo City was able to do it with reasonable government funding. Which, about, which is about 0.5% of the Parex's budget. 
for all of those things that I mentioned before with public support, Metro Manila should be able to do it with the Pasig River. So no to Parex, yes to Paris. And I'll leave you with one last message. It's paraphrasing uh, the naturalist and writer, John Muir. The Pasig River flows not past us, but through us. And it is only through our resolute action that we can save it and thus save ourselves. Thank you very much and good evening to all.